like I say, I'm here this afternoon. I'm glad you stopped by to see us this afternoon on our YouTube page. And we're talking about today is the word can heal. The word, the word, the word, the word heals. The word heals. John 4, 46 to 54. Uh, just to pay manual uh, as a presenter. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We thank you for your grace and mercy. Father, be with us as we as we found upon up on this word, God. And Lord, teach us the way you have it be spoken in Jesus' name. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The word heal is our is our topic today. And it's top and the text is coming from uh, the aim for change, we're going to talk about understanding the definition of faith and how Christ honors faithfulness. I uh, accept the faith in Christ, strengthens the relationship between Christ and the believer, and how to trust Jesus by the faith and actions to do what we can not do. Keep in mind, our, our key verse is John 4 and 35. So, so the Father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed in his whole house, therefore, was brought to Christ through this through this uh, miraculous miracle of healing. I want to I want to start with a with the lesson. I want to read King James this time. King James, uh, uh, John chapter four forty six through fifty four, and it reads: So Jesus came again to into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman who name was, whose son was sick of Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was out, came out, come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye would not believe. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down ere my child die. Or my child died. You said to him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word, the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the eleventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. Then, this is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was out of Judea into Galilee. So this is the second miracle. The first one when he, when he did the, when they changed the water into wine. So the second one is when he miraculously uh, healed this, um, he healed this, um, Heal this um, uh, this nobleman son. Amen. Amen. The people at we go to Capernaum in the background talking about the people, places, and time. Well, the Capernaum was located uh, at the northern northwestern shore of Sea of Galilee. Capernaum was a city of Galilean Providence, a central location in Jesus' earthly ministry. So this was Jesus. It was a central place that he preached at in Capernaum. But Jesus lived in Nazareth until he came to Galilee and was baptized by John the Baptist. And after John the Baptist was imprisoned, Jesus returned to Galilee and resided in Capernaum. So he kind of switched places with, with John, John the Baptist. And here on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, the same shore on Galilee that he called his first disciples. He called Peter, Andrew, and James and John. But Peter home is was in Capernaum. And um, he became the resident of Jesus and his apostles when they was now traveling. But the Lord often preached in the synagogues in Capernaum but, and performed many miracles in the city. But these miracles include the healing of the centurion's servant, the healing of the man with the palsy, the casting out of demons in the man in the synagogue, even though Jesus performed so many miracles in Capernaum. Even though he, he performed so many in Capernaum, they still didn't believe him. Amen. The people still just they 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 want to repent and they and they still don't believe him because he was he came from Nazareth because he was a carpenter's son. Amen. 
They and so, but they saw with their eye, but still did not believe. And the background, Canaan of Galilee is the birthplace of miracles in Jesus, in Jesus' ministry. The healing of the nobleman's son is notable as Capernaum, from about 16 miles away from Canaan. 16 miles now. The miracle is not only notable because of the geographical distance, but because it marks Jesus' return to Galilee. Prior to Jesus' arrival in Canaan, Jesus had taken a journey through Judea and Galilee. Jesus was compelled to go to Samaria. Historically, the Samaritans was condemned by the Jewish people. Yet Jesus needed to go to Samaria, and Jesus, and while being there, he encountered with a Samaritan woman at Jacob's well, who who had started a or a a a revival. Amen. A real revival. Amen. Leading to um, it, it just started a revival because. It revived, uh, revealed his identity to the Samaritan woman. And Samaritan woman found, found saving, believing faith in Jesus. And look what he encountered that Jesus caused a revival in Samaritan. So anyway, she went, she left the well, and she caused a revival. Because she told everybody, come see a man that told me about myself. Come on down. He's a Jew. I can tell you, but he spoke to me. He told me everything. So they had to go really see that the Jew really talked to her. He sat on the well and told about herself. So they really want to see who she was talking about. Amen. Slightly inconvenience is our um, is our um, is our little meditation this, this afternoon. So introduction is uh, taking a road trip can be one of the life fun adventures. But by, by car, you're able to witness some of the nation's finest landscape uh, from an eye level perspective. But you ride on an airplane, you can only just go see the top of things. Um, everything seemed to be going according to plan until the dreaded slowdown occurs. And then slowdown could be, could be from an accident, a road construction, a disabled vehicle needing assistance. Or seem to happen for no apparent reason. How many times you go down to 20, I 20 and you go in 75 miles per hour? Then all of a sudden you come on up on this, this pile of this, 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 all this traffic stop, and it makes your destination, it makes your destination a short, a longer. And you have to sit there and wait until you get time to go speed up like five or 10 miles per hour. Amen. But I believe when you get to a, a a get to a exit, you take that exit, and knowing that everybody taking that same exit, so it get compacted that way. But slight inconvenience can be annoying, stressful, and test our patience. As Jesus was passing through Galilee, he too was slightly inconvenienced. A desperate and determined government official caught Paul's Jesus on his journey, seeking assistance for his dilemma. His gravely ill son had heard that Jesus had done in the past. He hoped that his son could be the next recipient of the Savior's help. With Jesus, a man always about his father's business, managed to deter his agenda for someone else. Amen. That's the introduction. Our first <clears throat> topic is a dilemma. John 5, 46 through 49. This, this, um, this uh, centurion, this this uh, the man was in this. This um, he was in trouble. He had a decision to make. He was in trouble. He was he, this official. He was in trouble because he had he was in a dilemma. He knew his son was sick, so he needed the help of Jesus. So let me read verse forty six to forty nine, New Living Translation. As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Canaan, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a government official in nearby Capron whose son was very sick. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son, who was about, about to die. Jesus asked, will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? The official replied, Lord, please come now before my little boy dies. Let's get serious, Lord. My little son is sick. I, I, need, I need you to do something for him. But when we are faced with situations, 
we often look at the best person or the thing that can help us out of our situation to help to resolve them. But if the situation is, is dire need of, of something, it doesn't matter what it takes. We're willing to do it. The official dilemma fits this category. He walked about 20, 16 and 20 miles to enlist Jesus' assistance for his sick son. And when accounting Jesus, he relinquished his governmental, governmental authority and become a, as a commoner begging for Jesus' help because his son was knocking on death's door. And, and instead of com commanding his fear, his faith, Jesus delivered a gentle uh, rebuke. He said, believing that he might be yet another person wanted something from him other than the word of God. But still the official didn't relent to his petitioning. Come now, he desperately needed to divine heal of Jesus. And here he wanted him to hear and feel his sense of urgency. And although he's been re rewriting Jesus' plan, the official hoped his petition would be convinced him to do so. So not only did this, this, uh, this um, not only this government official had a problem, not only he had an urgency, not only did he didn't have nowhere else to go, this man knew who come to was Jesus Christ. Uh, then he had to make a, a dying decision in verse 50, 50, let me read verse 50. And it says, then Jesus told him, go back home, your son is lying. And the man believed what Jesus said and still and stayed home, stayed home. So in other words, he had to make a decision. And, and Jesus moved by the official uh, uh, plea. How Jesus didn't, does not alter his uh, itinerary. Instead, he declares, go, your son was well. Your son will live. Go, go home. How Jesus didn't say perform or request anything, yet said the true, the cure occurred. Without question or, co or corroboration, the official simply took Jesus at his word. How many times are you taking Jesus at his word? You took him at his word. Amen. And Christ said it, it and he sold it, and sold it for him. Society has successfully groomed us to be, to prove it, people. Well, Lord, if you want to bless it, prove it, Jesus. Prove it to me, Jesus. And what do we say? We say, prove it to me. Amen. But and, and, and in order for us to believe anything, it has to be proven satisfactorily rather than being taken on a blind trip faith. And in this situation, the official made the critical decision to believe in Jesus and his proven track record that he had for him with him. And it is, it is odd that this man in such a desperation would, would des desire some type of guarantee that Jesus' proclamation was needed. But instead, the man desperately, quietly, comfortably got up and went home. He comfortably got up and went home. And while he was, without any questions, and he trusted, he trusted the Lord with all his heart, and he leaned out on his own understanding and submitted to his ways to him. And it said that Jesus directed our path, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. What prevents us from simply believing God and taking him at his word? If a man is complete desperation, can trust in a long distance healing, can trust 15 or 20 miles from where he was, and Lord just healed him right there. If he can trust God that far, oh my God, what can we do if we really trust him? Uh, why can't we trust the word of the risen savior? It boils, it boils down to a decision, believe him or not. Either you believe him or you don't. Not only do we have, the man had a dilemma, not only man made a decision, but thirdly, he made a discovery. Let's see what 51, 51, 51 54, 54 says. It says, while the man was on his way, some of his servants met him and the news that his son was alive and well. He asked them when the boy had begun to get better. And they replied, yesterday afternoon at one o'clock, his feet was suddenly dis disappeared. Then the father realized that that was the, the very time that Jesus had told him, your son will, will live. And he and his entire family household believed in Jesus. This was the second miraculous sign Jesus did in Galilee after coming to Judea. Coming to Judea. 
So he made a discovery on his way home, walking by faith and not by sight. It's often easier than, than done. Uh, although we believe God, we still live in a circular world, which continually tries to cajole F into thinking that God needs to show us some truth, that God is don't work like he did in the Bible day. And still the official walked confidently in Jesus to his word, declaration of healing for his son and without confirmation. And while on his journey home, his servant greeted him with good news that your son is alive. And his healing came at the exact time Jesus declared it. Disciple of good news offered reassurance. If a man was needed, that Jesus' spoken word had power and amen, but that, um, and, and it was valid. It was it's valid. It was, it was valid. Amen. So the discovery further deepens the official's faith. He not only believed in his the proven of Jesus, but he now believed in his word. He believed that he is the word. And good news will always greet those who trust in God's word. The official encounter with, with Christ impacted him and his household so greatly that they all believed. Christ has a unique way of bringing us into a deepening discovery of him. A critically ill child of government worker brought about change for an entire household. God, ultimate plan for exceed our independent agenda. God, ultimate plan for ex exceeds our intended agenda. Gotta preach. Gotta preach. In 2002, the great actor Denzel Washington uh, gave a rever reverting performance in the movie John Q. Remember John Q, his, his character, uh, John Q Archibald, takes matters into his own hands when his nine-year-old son was in desperate need of a, a life-saving heart transplant. And his family had no money, they had no insurance, they had uh, and no, no other means of support to get it, to get it. So, John Q held the entire hospital hostage until he got what his son needed. His mindset, mindset was by any means necessary. Any means necessary. So the government official walked about 16 to 20 miles each way simply because he believed Jesus could heal his son. His son's life was that, that important, was very was that important to him. And true desperation. He leads us to making a rational risk to ensure our needs is met. It means you might have to be slightly inconvenienced in what you face so, so dire that you don't have a, a choice. Even when others say that you don't have to, you have, you have run out of options, amen. You still believe that there is a word from God. You still believe that there is a word. Conclusion. Slight inconvenience will always be a part of life. The reason for, for inconvenience will often vary. Still what we glean from the official testimony is to seek God with desperation and trust him no matter what. It may seem illogical and impulsive, but, but, but what we believe. Hmm. The official could, could see with his earthly eyes, but believe with his own soul eye, until his comfortable confirmation arrived. For faith is a source of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Thank you for listening with us, being with us this afternoon. Joseph Emanuel, jfmanuel55 at gmail.com. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for being a part of us today. And be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye now.